going on. There we go. Good. Yeah. You know, even if I lean over, it should be fine. Christo no, dear friends. I'm Courtney, and this is Opus L and I. If you haven't been completely living under a rock this year, and honestly, if you have, no shame. We cope how we must with worldwide pandemics. I'm sure that everyone here is familiar with the American Duchess cape. It's a pattern redacted from a beautiful 1910s cape. It has front panels that cross over each other and fasten in the back, and a cape portion that starts at the shoulder sleeve area with a back that is just slightly longer than the front sides. It's incredibly simple and elegant, and also fiddly and hard to fit if you're bigger than a museum display mannequin. Well, it's my birthday this month, and historically that has not always been a joyous occasion for me. With the pandemic and all, this year honestly isn't set to be any better, so I decided to splurge just a little bit on some amazing black and charcoal twill wool with sparkles and changeable silver silk to make something beautiful and fancy for myself. Before we get started, one quick administrative note. I'll be experimenting with a commercial break during this video. I know that there's a bit of a philosophical split in the community regarding mid-roll ads, and I'm not a huge fan of having a ton of them, but I do understand they make a big difference in creators' marketability to advertisers, and I'm making this a bit of an experiment to see if that's true. And now on to the actual important things. Today I am drinking Painted Desert by August Uncommon. It is a crisp black tea with chili and chocolate. It's quite tasty, very sweet, but with a hint of spice in there that makes it taste a little bit like Mexican hot chocolate or, um, you know, spicy dark chocolate that you can get from like really good chocolatiers. I do always love hearing what deliciousness you're sipping on as well. So grab your cuppa and let's get into it. The first thing I need is the pattern. American Duchess provided a scalable pattern on their Patreon for free, link in the description, but a very kind person on the History Bounding Facebook group posted an enlarged pattern that I printed out and taped together. Quick jump to my partner's house and it's time to make a mock-up. I'm using an old torn Tinkerbell sheet that is past its prime, starting with cutting off the elastic so it can lay flat.
Luckily, the sleeve wing pattern piece can fit sideways on the folded sheet, and the back collar and cross fronts can fit in around that. Yes, I'm drawing around the pattern pieces with a sharpie. No, it didn't bleed through to the carpet. This pattern has no seam allowance, so I'm cutting outside the drawn lines. Because of this though, and since I'm cutting the pieces doubled, I will have to mark the sewing lines on the other piece afterwards. Next, I'm going to base the darts onto the front pieces by sewing a ladder stitch in and pulling that thread tight. After I pin the shoulder, and uh, apologies for the bad lighting, I forgot to turn on my light box whilst filming this, I am actually going to base the entire mock-up together by hand, since it won't take too long, and also I can maximize snuggle time while hand sewing. And once I'm finished with that, time for a try-on. In general, it fits okay, except the back piece is a little small in all directions and too narrow to fit comfortably over my shoulders and shorter than the side seams on the sleeve wing things. Okay, friends, um, so here we have the pattern pieces, and you can see as I line up the shoulder pieces that they don't actually line up. You have the back is uh, not as wide as the front here, and so when I line them up and I put the little carrots over each other, uh, they're not the same size. And, okay, not only that, but this wing piece here, if I lay them down together, they don't line up in the front quite, right? So these pieces line up uh, better, um, but when I put the back piece on here and sort of rotate the wing piece around, the back and the wing piece don't really line up either. Um, it's hard to do this with one hand. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me put this on the tripod actually so I can have two hands. Okay. Okay, uh, let's try this with the two hands now. Alright, so here I have my back and my wing, and when I rotate the 
around like this, you can you can see the difference in the back versus the wing. Uh, they don't line up, which makes sense because they didn't line up when I was doing the mock-up either. So I'm gonna have to fix the whole back piece. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to scale this whole back piece up. Sharpen up the chalk and commence marking up the good fabric. make sure I mark the darts accurately and even though I'm not showing the entire process I'm being sure to mark the opposite front as well. Marking silk is way easier than marking wool. I should probably have thread marked the chalk lines, but I was in a hurry. Oops.
basting the darts closed on the fashion fabrics in the same way as I did the mock-up and I'll try to sew just on the outside of that line for easy basting thread removal. Uh, spoiler, I'll fail at this, but that's okay, it's not too bad. Stay tuned after this brief commercial break to see the construction of the cape. Safely back at home and time to sew. I'm starting with the darts on the front cross pieces. After that, I'll tie off the dart threads and remove the basting stitches. It's important to clean up your threads and keep your workspace tidy. I forgot to grab footage of trimming down the darts, but I did, down to about a quarter inch seam allowance after I pressed them flat. Next up, the actual construction seams. Shoulders pinned and sewn first, then pinning and sewing the sleeve, wing, cape, side, things.
I sewed the collar pieces right sides together, then trimmed the corners and flipped them right sides out. The silk contrast piece had the edges turned in and pressed under, and then fell down with tiny, near-invisible stitches. The curve of the collar was clipped on both the wool and silk sides of the cape. I didn't want to bag line the cape, which is when you put the fashion fabric and lining right sides together, so around the perimeter, leaving a small opening through which to turn the garment right side out. I felt that flat lining, where you turn the seam allowances of each piece under and sew them together from the outside, would give me more control.
Thank you for joining me today, my lovely croissants. I hope you all are having a wonderful December, that you stay safe and as healthy as may be this holiday season, and that you give yourself permission to make something wonderful for yourself this year. As always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and if you want to see more, give me a subscribe. I upload every other Friday. Yes, that does mean that my next video will drop on Christmas Day. And if you want reminders, turn on the notification bell. If you'd like to find me on other platforms, I am Opus LNI everywhere, and I will put those links in the description below, along with the link to my coffee page if you would like to help me buy more beautiful fabrics to make beautiful things from. And also brand treats, those are important too. Be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Whew. If you haven't been completely living under a rock this year, so grab your cuppa and let's get into it.